Hello and welcome to another week of high school football talk on Mark's Madness. I'm Matt Finkel, joined as always by Mark Miller. Halfway point of the season, we've reached it. Yeah. I can't believe it. We always talk about how fast quick. the season yeah. has gone. Five weeks are in the books. Let's begin by recapping week five. The NWC, a good one. We had mm -hmm. Ada over Columbus Grove. Got to think that's an upset. Yeah, that's yeah. definitely an upset. And the big story in this game, no Seth Conley. Broken arm out for the season. Makes it a bigger upset. Even bigger, you know? yes. Uh, but, uh, you know, credit to Trent Jolla. My goodness, he came in and had a really nice game. 16 to 26, good efficiency, 289 and a couple of touchdowns. And Blake Ansley, I mean, he's the go to guy now, over 200 yards receiving, a couple of touchdowns. Uh, you know, so you got to really give him credit. Number one, you lose your quarterback. Number two, another guy steps in and plays just as well. Uh, so, they, you know, they, they should be eight turnovers helped. All right, yes. now Grove's a good football team. Can't win a game with eight turnovers you know, unless you're playing a really, really bad team. And eight is a good team, and so that's uh, you know that's 19 to seven. They're luckily well, probably wasn't worse than that. Right, Trent Jaloff, the quarterback who came in 225 yards, two scores, and you mentioned the eight turnovers. That's kind of uncharacteristic for yeah. Grove. Yeah. Something they'll like they'll likely get turned around this week. Staying in the north in the Northwest Conference, Allen East, another big win for them mm -hmm. over Bluffton, 41-24. They got out to a fast start in this one, led 21 nothing. Yeah, you get out to a big lead and it's hard to come back, even with the throw games that we have in high school football now. But, you know, I think a lot of people were doing a wait and see on Allen East. You know, they, they were beating some pretty decent people early on. They thought, well, are they really that, they're really that good? They beat Bluffton and Bluffton had all back. So, you know, that, that's a real quality victory for Allen East right there. And Spencer Miller, you know, he did it with the run, did it with the pass. Uh, you know, I, I heard that he got hurt a little bit right at the end of the game. We hope he's ready to go next week. But 331 yards rushing, that's a good game for the Mustangs. They are the real deal, at least they are. as it yeah. appears right now. And yep. their NWC schedule will get tougher. Of course, Spencerville, they look unbeatable right now. They're 5-0, <laughs> and 61-25 oh, yeah. over Crestview. Zach mm -hmm. Goki again. They, I mean, they just they threw the ball one time in this game, and it doesn't matter. <laughs> Don't have to. Yes. They completed it, yeah. so good per yeah. percentage. But you know, 598 yards rushing, 300 yard rushers in one game. We've seen that occasionally with other teams, but these guys have it almost every week and Goki's the man, you know, 17 carries to get over 200 yards. And we're going to take a look at him in a little while, but my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. They got it rolling. They're exciting. good. They're good on defense too. They're great on defense yeah. as well. And yeah. you know, as exciting as running the ball, doesn't get the press that passing it does, you know, the publicity, I feel like in terms of excitement, mm -hmm. they're about as exciting as a run team. Oh yeah. They get big see. plays. Yeah, huge I mean, plays. You look at the, the yards per carry, was it 9.8 or yeah, something? They average almost 10 per carry. Oh so, my yeah. goodness. They're and really good. Speaking of good running games, then you got to talk about Delphus Jefferson, yep. another big win for them. 41, nothing over Paulding mm -hmm. with Hunter Binkley, 146 yards yeah. in, in the victory. And four touchdowns. Yeah. You know, that's a collision course, Spencerville and Jefferson, you know, that that's going to be a, uh, you know, d don't bring the faint-hearted that night because that'll be a strap them up and go run the ball kind of night. Let's go talk about the Western Buckeye right. League now, and, and things are staying competitive there. Bath challenges Wapak. Wapak has now been down early in their last two games, but they've come back. They used a big second half, and they got the win over Bath 24-14. Yeah, 21-game win streak in the WBL for Wapak. They're the team to beat, no doubt, but they have been challenged. And Bath, they're kind of the tough luck team in the WBL. They've had three games that they, they really kind of outplayed the other team statistically, especially in the first half. They dominated this game in the first half. They have two snafus on the punt, and that kind of killed them. In a close game against a very good team, uh, that's going to kill them. And, and they were right there showing everybody that they're, they're going to be tough to beat no matter what night you get them. That was a very physical game mm -hmm. they played with Wapak, and I know that's how Bath plays all of their games. Yeah. Wapak has a tough upcoming WBL schedule left. They still have St. Mary's, Van Wert, OG, and Salina coming up yeah. this week. So it's not a given that they're going to go no. undefeated. And St. Mary's beat Elida this past week, week 5, 35-21, 411 rushing yards mm -hmm. for the Riders. We took a look last week on our play breakdown to see what mm -hmm. they do so well on the ground, and they're just continuing to do what, what they do. Yeah, they, and, and Doug Fry, he hasn't won all those games and championships for nothing. He knows how to game plan. Logan Alexander, Elida's quarterback, come, came in as the WBL's leading rusher. He got 41, you know, and, yes. and I know he tried hard. So it's yeah. not like he laid down for him. But they game planned it and they stopped him. Now they gave up some other points to some other guys, but he, he'll be able to take a, a guy away. And that's the mark of a really good coach and a good defensive staff down there. But uh, yeah, that, that's St. Mary's over 400 yards rushing. Uh, that's pretty good. And, you know, we talk about Spencerville and their, their three running backs. St. Mary's got them too. Yeah, they have a three-headed attack as well. Yeah, yeah. Eric Spicer they've got, and uh, 
Julius Fisher, Logan Mays, so yep. three guys doing the, carrying the workload there. Mm -hmm. And that's a great point about their mm -hmm. defense because uh, you, when you talk about St. Mary's, you t tend to talk about their offense and their mm -hmm. rushing attack, but their defense really shut down a very good Elada team. And, and, and the thing about St. Mary's, they are a run team, but they've been hurting teams with a play-action pass. Yes. You know, they've, they've scored a, a big touchdown against Elida the week before. They had two, uh, so they can throw it when they have to. they just rather not. Van Wert, a big win over Kenton, 38 mm -hmm. nothing, and this might be a score that we were surprised about a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Now, not as much, but do you think the early adversity that Van Wert faced blowing a couple big leads has yeah. helped them? Well, it seems to have made them, you know, they've been resilient. They've come back. Credit Keith Recker and his staff for, for making that happen because young guys, you know, they can go down or get up based on, you know, how the coaches are reacting. And, but they only gave Kenton 160 yards and Colin Smith, you know, the run pass, the dual threat there, had a great game. They're good. They're pretty good. Um, they've played everybody tough, could have had another victory or two, but they, they could have a real good year by, by winning out with the teams that they should beat, and I think they can play with anybody. Rounding out the rest of the Western Buckeye League, it was OG and Salina with wins over Shawnee and Defiance, both mm -hmm. at home. So now let's big go to the MAC. The big one in the MAC this week was marrying local St. Henry and the Flyers, 42-7. Mm -hmm. Victors over the Redskins, St. Henry mm -hmm. having that Coldwater Marion back-to-back, <laughs> which yeah. Minster, Minster just got had. to enjoy that yeah. a couple weeks ago. I mean, <laughs> it, it's part of playing in the MAC, mm -hmm. but the Flyers, they seem to be hitting their stride, and we've got a big one coming. I'm looking forward to it, week seven. Yeah. It's coming up, Coldwater yeah. Marion. That's right. That's yeah. the one that everybody's looking for, and, and they've got some challenges before them. Both those teams do because the MAC is so strong from top to bottom, but, uh, yeah, you, you just kind of knew they had lost a lot. They were young. Uh, you just knew they'd get better and better, and Tim Goodwin has a way of doing that, and here they come. They'll be ready to go. Five different Flyers scoring in that game for Marion Local, so there's not just one playmaker on that team. They've got, they've got, they've a, got couple. a bunch. Yeah. Coldwater cruises past Anna 40-7, to and we're going to sound like a broken record, but their first team defense <laughs> didn't give up any points again. Yeah. Their total team defense giving up just 13 all season yeah. through five games they're about as dominant as you can be in high school football right now and they don't just keep people out of the end zone they gave up 33 total yards 33 yards that's ridiculous. I, I, I don't yeah. ever remember seeing that yeah. you know they're really good uh 40 to 7 knowing chip otten that probably could have been 60 to 7. i mean you know he he shuts her down yeah. pretty early um yeah they're good they're good right now and they, and they'll if they their key is to stay healthy Minster over Versailles, 20 to 12. This was a mm -hmm. grinded out kind of game. Mm -hmm. Pick six by Jared Hillsman, l less than six minutes in the game, sealed it. Otherwise, it was Versailles coming mm -hmm. down the field in the fourth quarter trying mm -hmm. to get back the lead. So, I mean, that was a good game. This was right there for anybody to take. That, that was an 80 yard interception yeah. return. They also had four interceptions in the fourth quarter alone. Wow. So, Versailles had some chances. Uh, some of those were probably desperation throws, you know, I understand that. But, you know, you turn it over a lot, you get a big interception return, and it's still only an eight-point game. So that, that was a pick em, but a big win for Minster after losing to Marion Local and Coldwater. They had to get back on the win track in the MAC, and they did it. Yeah, right, they did just that. That'll get them some playoff points. Yes. Yeah. And Fort Recovery, 41 nothing over Parkway. They're 5-0. and Caleb Martin had four touchdowns. Now, this is, can they win the MAC? Because we know Coldwater mm -hmm. and Marion are going to knock each other off. One of them is going to have That's a league right. loss. Fort Recovery only plays one of them on yeah, their schedule. Yeah, I don't, don't play think they have cold water. Yeah. So they, if they beat Marion, they could win the Yes, match. they do. Now they have to go to Marion. Yeah. They got Minster at home, so that, that's kind of good. Uh, yeah, they got a chance. You know, I mean, uh, they're 5-0, and oh, and they're, they're beating people up pretty good. Uh, yeah, I mean, that, that's the next step in their progression is beat the big boys, the ones that are on top of the league every year, and they've got a chance to do it. they got to think they can. They're 5-0. and oh. They haven't missed a beat from their yeah. historic season last year. Lima Senior at home again this week over Fremont Ross and a mm -hmm. nice bounce back win, 562 total yards. They did lose six fumbles in this game. Yeah, how do you win a game and fumble a ball six you times? You have an offense. You're pretty like, good. Yeah, you have an offense <laughs> yeah. like Lima Senior. That's how That's you do right. it. You're pretty good when you can do that. Jaden Walker, three touchdowns, another big night for Ruben Flowers, the yeah. third. Ten catches, 161 yards and two touches, and that's the third game in a row. He's had double-figure catches. Uh, they, they just can't stop him. I mean, you know, to stop him, you have to hope it rains and blows like crazy. Yeah. You know, because he can't is, throw the ball. he's a man. Yeah. yeah. He's Physically, he's, he's better than the defensive backs trying to cover. You just have to throw it in his general area, yeah. and he'll come down with it. And yeah. also in the track, Finley's 5-0. and oh, They beat Clay. They now have St. John's, Lima Senior, and Central Catholic coming up. So it will get tougher, yeah. but you got to be impressed with the Trojans so far. Playing very well. Um, 
you know, good senior leadership, good talent all around, and Mark Ritzler does a nice job up there. The next three weeks are very difficult. I don't care who you're playing now. Toledo Central Catholic, very young. They're playing some freshmen, and they've lost a couple early in the year. But they'll be good, and those other two, we know Lima Senior and St. John's are going to put up some points. So Finley, tough three weeks coming. Let's see what they got. Before we get to our play breakdown, let's just mention LCC, mm -hmm. a big bounce back win for them, this one against Rogers, mm -hmm. and O'Connor did a little bit of everything. When they win, he does do that. They have great skill yeah. guys, and O'Connor at, at the quarterback position, he had 325 yards, four touchdowns, and they, they are dangerous offensively. Yeah. And he ran for over 100 and had three more, so he accounted for seven touchdowns on his own. But that's their offense. I mean, if they're going to have a big night offensively, he's going to have huge stats. Right. You know, he's going to run it or pass it. We saw that in, with the Mocks and Kenton. And uh, Ethan is, is very, very good. Uh, that's a lot of pressure on a young man, but he thrives on it and, and does very well with it. But that's a great game and a good win for LCC, get him back above 500, three and two. And this week they're home again, and it's a game you'll be able to see on WOSN against a team from Indiana, Woodland. And this is their third straight home game, then they'll, they'll hit the road then again. Then they so. hit the road big time. Yeah, so, so their, their <laughs> schedule's interesting, as we've talked about, since they're not mm -hmm. in a conference. All right, let's break down a couple of plays for you. Spencerville rushing attack has been one of the major stories of the 2015 season. It's a three-headed attack led by Zach Gokey. What'd they do against Crestview, Mark? Well, let's look at Zach Gokey. He's, uh, he's the main man. He's just going to get the ball. They pull the backside guard, lead up with the front side running back, and he makes a nice cutback, and there's nobody back there because they're flowing so strong to that big run game. We're going to see it in slow motion. There's 52 pulling up inside, and right there's the block and the cutback. The guys are still working downfield because they're used to these big runs, and that's Zach Gokey putting them out in front of Crestview. We're going to see now same action. They pull the backside guard. He traps instead of logs on the end man on the line of scrimmage. They give it to the up back. That's Chris Picker. He's through the line of scrimmage, a la St. Mary's last week, before anybody knows he has the ball. Look at the action, though. Zoki faking that handoff, just like the play he got last time. The guys are working downfield for him, and he's just running right down the middle of the field. And then finally, the free safety says, whoops, he's got the ball, and I can't catch him now. Big, that's a 61-yarder there. See, this is the run game. These are big plays. These are exciting plays. All right, third play. Going to give it to Goki again now. Watch this cutback. Same action. All three plays look very similar to the defense. Cuts it all the way back. Now the quarterback, Mason Nurse, was carrying out a fake. He says, I'm going to get a block and spring him into the end zone. Good effort here by Crestview to try to dive at the very end, but Zoki falls into the end zone. Three big plays, very similar in nature. The result, the same. Touchdowns. Great job to reverse field there by Goki. And you can't say enough about what he's done so far this year. The Spencerville offense over 2,500 yards already this season. That's more than 700 more than their next, <laughs> the second place team in the NWC for yards gain. They average 482 per game on the ground. Just video game numbers. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. So. it's a, it's amazing. And and you know with the depth that they've got with three guys running, you know one guy gets tired, one guy gets nicked, one guy needs a rest. They still got some some quality running backs back there for the guys to block for up front. So it'll be fun to watch them play out the final five weeks of the season, and we expect them to make it to the postseason. Yeah. So we'll, we'll yeah. see how that plays out. In the, in the Blanchard Valley Conference, rounding out our Week 5 recap, Macomb over Arcadia, no surprise mm -hmm. there. No. Hopewell Loudon beat Liberty Benton 28-21, yeah. and Arlington beats Riverdale, while Corey Rawson defeats Van yeah. Luke. That's Corey Rawson's first win of the season, yeah. so congrats to new head coach there, Corey, Corey Hefner. That's yeah. right. Yeah, that's a good win for them. And, and the game in the league there that I thought was a little interesting is Liberty Benton getting beat. That's yeah. their second loss. Yeah, that's surprising yeah. considering the mm -hmm. last couple seasons they haven't yeah. been beaten in the regular season at all. Right. And they have their three-year starter. Hope well Loudon must be good. Yeah, They're Hope well Loudon. They are yeah. good, yep. And then in the NWCC, Fort Warmy in the win column over Harden Northern. <laughs> Last week we were talking about Harden Northern maybe having a chance to make the playoffs. Of course they still do. Yeah. Fort Warmy, it was surprising to see them 0-4. Good to see them get a win with Whit Parks. Right, they did it with defense, you know, kind of like Coldwater. Gave up 61 yards. That's still phenomenal. Not quite the 33 that Coldwater gave up. But, yeah, that's a big win for Fort Warmy. Got to get that zero off there, especially with a new coach. Riverside's 5-0 mm -hmm. in the NWCC. Layman Catholic defeated Perry and come from behind fashion 28-25. Yeah. Yeah. And USV got Waynesfield Goshen, so they're 3-2. Yeah. and Got to mention Austin Sloan, 219 yards rushing on 12 carries. Wow, <laughs> that's, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's that, talking about high average. That average. There. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Mm. So that does it for week five. We can now look ahead to week six, and there's plenty to look forward to. Cool. We've got some games on the docket. Mm. What are you looking forward to? Uh, I like Versailles St. Henry. You know, both at 3-2 and two and 
And, uh, you know, they're, they're fighting for their playoff life. That's a huge game for that, and I think it'll be very competitive. Finley and St. John's going to be a lot, uh, going to say a lot about how that track thing starts to angle out. And then uh, I like two WBL games. I think Bath and St. Mary's going to be a real good game. Yes. Uh, it's going to be very physical, lots of runs. I, I think that'll be a good game. And Van Wert, Elida, I think, could be a really good game. Um, Elida likes to run it. Van Wert's got the, you know, the, the same kind of deal as Alexander. They run and pass, you know. So uh, that'll be a good game. Uh, there's a lot of others around. You get to this time of the year, they're good games because they mean so much. Right. Yeah. Wapak Solana and the WBL, oh, yeah. too. You, know, you don't good. even mention that one. That yeah. could be a great one down on, on the lake there. So. And then we've got Spencerville Grove, um, Jefferson Bluffton. So mm -hmm. take your pick. Anywhere yeah. you go Friday, it's going to be pretty good. And let's show you what you can watch over the weekend. Here's a look at our rebroadcast schedule. It all begins on Friday at 11 p.m. right after the sports report on WTLW with Arlington versus Liberty Benton. Good one in the BVC. Friday, 11 p.m., Bath St. Mary's, one of those two games you're looking forward to, Mark. It'll be on the West Ohio Sports Network Friday, 11 p.m. Saturday, doubleheader for you. Fort Recovery versus New Bremen at 7, followed by Lipsick Macomb at 9. And then Sunday, that Woodland versus LCC game can be seen at 9 p.m. Well, thank you very much, Mark. Great job as always. We'll be back to the Breakdown Week 6 for you next week. In the meantime, enjoy your games.